Welcome back, everyone. My name is Michael LeBlanc, Director and Senior Portfolio Manager at Canaccord Unity Wealth Management. And thank you for joining us here again this week at Mike on Money. And you can always visit us at mikeonmoney.com where you can find these videos. Uh, we try to put them out every week and covering off uh, everything around personal finances and strate strategic investing for Canadians. And this week, we're going to be talking a little bit about taxes, specifically flow, flow through shares. Before I get started, as always, though, keep in mind that everything we talk about here is for educational purposes only. Always do your own due, dil due diligence or seek the, uh, the advice of a professional. Uh, if you have any questions about anything we talk about here today, go to mikeonmoney.com, reach out to us, uh, email us, phone us. Happy to answer those questions for you and see how these strategies might apply to your situation uh, or other ones that might, uh, might help you out in your tax front. So with that, we're going to dive right into it. Uh, keep in mind, every Tuesday at noon, we do a live uh, market update. Uh, everything that happened last week, everything's happened in the week ahead. Uh, we are going to be talking about some tax strategies for the year tax year 2020 um, uh, on top of uh, flow throughs, but a lot of other strategies and changes that, uh, that have happened over the last year. Uh, but today we're going to talk about uh, flow through shares. So let's, uh, let's get on with that. Um, hard to think of. We're already into tax season. You know, this is February 15th today. So happy family day where, uh, you know, 2020 is behind us. And we're going to be filing taxes for that year uh, coming up here pretty quickly. The, obviously, there's a lot of things that went on that year. And uh, hopefully you got everything organized as far as tax deductions and your uh, receipts. Uh, if you uh, if you haven't, you know, the only uh, the only real uh, strategy for last year would be your RSPs, which is March 1st deadline. But uh, flow through shares, so let's talk about them. So this uh, would be for your tax year 2021. That's when you'd be able to apply these deductions and use them into your tax strategy. Uh, but now that our minds are on taxes, it's a good time to take a look at them. And they are much more popular at the beginning of the year. Because specifically what a flow through share is, as many companies in Canada, specifically in the resource uh, and energy sectors uh, are given special tax exploration tax deductions. So, uh, mine in, for example, if they're going to go, uh, you know, test uh, test drill uh, some land, look for uh, look for some minerals, uh, all that uh, they get special governmental or CRA tax deductions in order to help fund that. So what they do is they set up a class of share called a flow through, and just as the name kind of indicates, they flow those tax deductions through to you. Now, some of the criteria to qualify for the flow through shares for a company is the money has to be spent in that calendar year. So they're much more popular at the beginning of the year. There are always some at the end of the year, but the quality tends to go down a little bit. You have a lot more options at the beginning of the year because that gives the company the entire year to go and spend that capital that they're gonna raise through the sale of these flow through shares on their projects and get all those tax deductions in place in order to uh, to get them to you. If you buy that at the end of the year, uh, September, October, companies have to scramble a bit to spend that money. Uh, some projects are very viable and they, you know, they just need that bit of capital to get them over the, uh, get them over the finish line uh, for the calendar year. Uh, so, so they might be available at the end of the year, but again, beginning of the year is, uh, is more important. So how do these shares uh, benefit you? Well, uh, one, you're invested into a company. So it's just like buying stock in a particular project uh, or a particular company. Uh, so we do really, really, really recommend you do a lot of due diligence on the names that you're buying because some, like any equity, are better than others. So, you know, what's the quality? What's the project? What's the viability? Who's the management behind the firm? Uh, all the track record, all these different things. There are a lot of... Um, I won't call them funds, but I call them limited partnerships out there that will combine uh, several flow through investments into one portfolio. Uh, those, those are available and those tend to attract people a lot more because it gives you that diversification uh, within the portfolio itself. So instead of just buying one particular project, you can diversify and those can have themes. So for, you know, ex a, for example, for 2021, a big popular one uh, is, is gold. And in fact, uh, that was popular for, for year 2020. 
Uh, that was actually our last live in-person workshop that we did was March, early March, I think it was March 5th, um, 2020. Uh, we talked about taxes for the year and we covered flow throughs and specifically we talked about the gold because uh, we did recommend that and those did work out really well. Um, but uh, but again, this year we are still looking at gold as, as a recommendation. So uh, you might want to look at a portfolio of different uh, gold um, uh, companies uh, or projects in order to give you that diversification and still get the tax deductions. So how do these deductions work and how, uh, how do you want to use them? So first of all, this is a risk investment. So do keep in mind uh, how much you're going to put into it is at risk. So the capital is at risk. So uh, I wouldn't go crazy. I've seen people try to um, you know, get big, big tax deductions and big savings from these things. Uh, so be very cautious. The other thing to keep in mind is Canada does have alternative minimum tax. So that means you can have all these deductions, but if you deduct or bring your income, taxable income down too much through these strategies, uh, CRA will turn around and tax you what they feel you should pay anyway. Or there's a formula, not just what they feel, but there's a formula and they'll still tax you. Uh, and you get to claim that back over several years. So you don't lose the tax deductions, but AMT or alternative minimum tax is not something I, I'd recommend you kind of get involved with. Do do the calculations and again, you know, that's where uh, seeking professional advice, either from your advisor or from your accountant to make sure you don't fall into that category. But if you, uh, if you determine that you do need some extra tax deductions and flow throughs uh, make a lot of sense, here's basically how they work. So you get this flow through deduction. Now, the great thing about this deduction, it's right off your income. So this is your fully taxed income. So whether it's earned income, rental income, interest income, uh, if it's dividend or capital gained income, it's after those deductions. So for example, capital gains are halved. Uh, it comes right off the taxable portion. So you, it doesn't get split in half. So very powerful deduction. So if you put in 50,000 into a flow through, you get 50,000 deducted straight off of your uh, taxable income. So that's, you know, hopefully that's all in your top tax bracket because that's the only way you'd want to use that. And you get to take advantage of the tax savings uh, that you would apply for that. The other great thing about uh, the flow through shares is once uh, once you've bought it, so once you've deducted that 50,000 and you have 50,000 worth of these shares now in your portfolio, but the cost base on that is now zero. So you, you fully deduct the capital that you put into that. So your cost base is zero. So let's say at the end of the period, because there is a hold period for these things, generally they're 12 to 18 months, some can be longer. Um, but at the end of that period, when these things come, uh, come free trade in, uh, let's say you liquidated it. So if you liquidated it, it at a 50,000 investment and, and they did, let's say nothing changed, it's still worth just the 50,000. At the end of that period, your, uh, your cost on that is zero. So you now have 50,000 in capital gains. So now it's not anything to be worried about. You've turned uh, income deduction into a capital gain. So that's, you, you've cut the tax in half. So on that 50,000 uh, capital gain, only 25,000 would uh, be taxable at the end. So still a big win. And also hopefully, since you've held it for 12 or 18 months, uh, maybe in that next year, you do, you're in a lower tax bracket. So you've been able to uh, defer that tax uh, to a future year uh, when you're not taxed as much. And now it's, it, it's down to a, a capital gain of, um, of, of or, or fifty thousand dollars capital gain, or taxable income of twenty five thousand. So that's a huge benefit in itself. Uh, <coughs> you know, uh, very powerful when it comes to your tax calculations. Now there are other things you can do with that. You can actually donate that fifty thousand, right? Um, so you don't pay any capital gains. Keep in mind when you donate any capital gain positions, uh, you don't pay the capital gain, and the charity doesn't pay the capital gain because they're exempt. So you can donate it, you get a $50,000 tax receipt, and now you get another deduction and you don't experience the capital gain. So, uh, so there are different things that you can do uh, to, to offset, that, um, offset that income. You could do, donate a portion of it, say 25,000, know, do the math, figure out how much uh, tax you would owe at the end. Uh, but you can actually uh, use, use that donation power to, to offset that capital gain down the road. Now, when they do come from 
come free trade. And as I mentioned, these are equities and they will have performance. That means your 50,000 could be worth more or it could be worth less. You don't have to sell it right away. A lot of them will roll over into a mutual fund in which uh, case you can time the t your, your sale. Uh, you know, if you think it's going to continue to perform well, or if it's going to bounce back, or if you just don't want to trigger the tax at that particular point, you only pay the tax when you actually trigger the, um, when you do the sale. So when you trigger that capital gain is, is when you actually do the sale. So the rollover is usually tax exempt and then you can plan out when you want to trigger those. So as I said, flow throughs, great opportunity in a portfolio, especially if you're in a high tax bracket or if you have special situations, maybe you sold some property where you have a higher than normal uh, income this year due to the capital gains on that property. Uh, if, if you know you're going to have higher uh, taxes for 2021, uh, something definitely worthwhile take a look at it. As I said, a lot of different sectors you can take advantage of it with, uh, and you can get diversification by using some of those uh, limited partnerships, uh, you know, that diversify your investment across multiple projects. So that's uh, flow through shares in a nutshell. I'll leave that with you. Uh, if you do have any questions, again, go to michaelmoney.com, let us know how we can help. Uh, and if you have any feedback or any topics you'd like us to cover on uh, this video, you can watch on, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we also have a podcast. If you're listening to that, the, this there, uh, thank you very much. But if you have any ideas, please let us know. We're always happy to cover off topics that are of interest to you. So with that, I'll say happy family day and we'll talk to you on Tuesday. Thank you.